Let's take a look at the steps required for setting up a custom part template in SOLIDWORKS. When you load SOLIDWORKS, you get three standard templates to begin with, and you can take those and customize them per your customer-specific requirements. Let's click on the New button on the standard toolbar to access those templates. In this exercise, we'll focus on a part template. So click on Part, and then click OK to open up that generic template. There are two primary areas that we want to focus in on, document properties and custom properties. We'll talk about the document properties first. To access them, go to the Tools pull-down menu, click on Options, and then click on the Document Properties tab. In this dialog, you'll see two areas, a left column that houses the various topics and the right side of the dialog that has the specific settings for those menu choices. Take a moment and browse through the different options and you'll see various settings for each type. Things like annotation, dimensions, units, etc. If you have specific questions on any of the settings in these areas, simply select the topic in the left column and click on the Help button in the bottom right-hand corner. This will access the SOLIDWORKS help system and give you accurate descriptions as to the various settings and what functions they perform. Once you've established all of your settings for the document properties, click on the OK button to save those settings. The custom properties are located under the file pull-down and click on properties. These can best be described as items that you would want to populate in a title block or a bill of material. This is a two-step process. The first step is to click on the edit list button in the upper right hand corner and this is where we'll add the custom properties that we want to be able to access. Simply click on the top field and type in the property that you want to add and click the Add button to add it to your list. Repeat this step as many times as you need to to get all of your custom properties added to the list. You can then select on the items in the list, click on the up or down buttons to resort them, and this will influence the order in which they show up in the drop down. Click on the item in the list and the delete button to remove any one of these properties from the list. When you've completed adding all of your properties, click on OK to close that dialog. Now we're ready to add the custom properties for show. Click on the drop down in the property name and click the property that you wish to add. Put a temporary placeholder in the value area. so you know which property to access in the title block. Repeat this step as many times as you need to until all of your custom properties are added to your document. As a shortcut you can use the tab key to tab between columns. When you've finished adding all your custom properties click on the OK button to save those into the document. Once you have those two areas customized to your liking, the last step is to save this off as a document template file type. To do this, we use the File Save As function. So go to the File pull-down, click on Save As, and we want to access the Save As Type dialog. In this drop-down list, you'll see many file types, one of which is the template extension. In this case, we'll go with the part template, since that's the file type that we're customizing, and select it. And then we'll give this file a name. We'll navigate in the system to a location outside of the program files area to be sure that these uh, customizations are stored in a safe location. I've created a folder called Reference Data and a subfolder called Templates. 
pay close attention to the subfolders that I have in this area. These will show up as tabs in the new template dialog box. So I'll store this under My Templates with the name that I've specified and click the Save button. Now when I go to the New button, you can see the tabs across the top and in my templates you'll see my brand new part option there. I'm going to click on OK to open it. Go to Custom Properties. You'll see the properties that I've added to that item. It's that simple. The last step is to navigate or to add a, excuse me, to add a file location uh, so we can access those new templates. To do so, go back into the Tools options, but this time go to the System Options tab. In the left-hand column, you'll see a category called File Locations, and we want to find the reference uh, path here called Document Templates. And near, simply click on the Add button and navigate to that new template location. You can have multiple locations on here, but I prefer to use a single location with various subfolders that show up as tabs. Once you have the path loaded, click OK to add that path. Now you're ready to begin creating new part templates. You can set up as many templates as you need for various uh, design standards, uh, units, or whatever case you might have within your company. There's no limit to the amount of part templates that you can create and store. This process is the same for making assemblies and drawing templates as well. Have fun.